You brood of vipers! Who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? What? Scary, isn't it? If you were met with that as you walked into church, what would you think? I think we'd better pray. Let's do that. Loving Lord, sometimes we can be frightened by things which are going on around us. We cannot be sure what will happen. But we know that our lives are in your hands and our names are so precious to you that our, they are graven into the palms of your hands. As we celebrate this Advent season, teach us to look with expectation to the coming of Christ and to learn what that means. Through Christ our Lord we pray. Amen. Well, perhaps I'd better start in a gentler way then. All sorts of things went through my mind. I thought, shall I talk about contemporary events, you know, parties, gatherings, that kind of thing? I thought, no, 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 that's not appropriate. Shall I talk about politics? Shall I talk about duplicity in changing minds? No, no, that's not appropriate. Well, should we talk about what's happening then in the world around us? Should we scare ourselves by the Omicron variant and what all that means? I thought, no, you probably hear enough of that on the news. Well then, I thought, maybe I should talk about liturgy. Let's talk about the fact that today is Gaudete Sunday. What does it mean? Gaudete literally means rejoice. It comes from the Latin. Gaudete Dominum Semper, rejoice in the Lord always. The beginning of the passage that we heard from Philippians. And that's why we have a pink candle. Because the idea is that on Gaudete Sunday you break the penitence that there is in the season of Advent, because you're about halfway through, and you have a party. Oh, I promise not to say that. But you do. You have a little bit of relief from the tension and the heaviness of the, of the season. Just, just a little bit. Except that unfortunately, when Gaudete was first thought about as being the very first word in Latin of the introit, the song that would very often start a service, and actually which you will hear picked up in the lovely anthem that the choir is going to be singing later, you would think it's the beginning of rejoicing, but unfortunately people got it wrong because this is not a season of penitence. It's a season of preparation, yes, but it's not the same as the similar season of Lent. It is a time of preparation for the first coming, but also the second coming of Christ. How then are we to find the relief that is necessary that word Gaudete is lovely. Ancient words that we use to tell an even more ancient story. You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath that is to come? John could have been talking to the politicians of his own day, but he wasn't. He was talking to the whole of society he was saying, who warned you? What, in other words, is the motivation for you coming to me to be baptised, to receive this baptism of repentance? Well, he said, don't try to claim privilege. Don't say that your connections will save you. Don't say, I am a child of Abraham. In other words, I am a good Jew. Don't say that, because that is not enough. God is quite capable of taking a stone like this and making a child of Abraham for himself. You have no special place. You have no privilege. You have to come before God in the right way. You have to come and repent. Otherwise, your cause is lost. 
John, a very powerful preacher, but he told it as it was. He pulled no punches, he got up people's noses, and he did it quite deliberately. He got up Herod's nose in particular by telling him that the person that he was wanting to marry, he shouldn't, because she was his brother's wife. Herod, of course, eventually took his revenge and threw John into prison. But for this brief moment, a candle flame of John the Baptist burns bright. And it burns bright because he has been told that his role is to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah, make straight the way of the Lord, prepare for the coming of the Lord. And so that's what John does. And he's saying to the people who come to him, you cannot hide from God. If you repent, you've got to repent, literally turn around, or if you like, turn away from your sins. And the people begin to ask him, well, what does that mean for us? What should we do? And John says, well, if you've got two coats, give one away. If you've got too much food, give some away. In other words, don't be selfish. Don't hold on to things for yourself. Be generous. Think of other people. Wear masks when you have to, not to protect yourself, but to protect those with whom you come in contact. It's a very modern message that John gives. Think about others before you think about yourself. Remember to step off the pavement, not into the line of a passing car, but step off the pavement to allow others past. Maintain social distancing. Do all the things that your generation tells you to do to keep others safe. Ah, but we are tax collectors, say the next lot who come to him. What should we do? And you notice that it says even tax collectors came. Tax collectors were the biggest sinners of all. Why? Because they not only charged taxes, you may think that this is contemporary too, but they took a little bit on the side for themselves. Thank you. This is our commission for helping the government collect its taxes. We'll have some for the government and a little bit for us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. John says, don't do that. Be honest in your dealings. And the soldiers come, and the soldiers say, so what about us? What should we do? We're under orders. <coughs> and John said, don't extort money from people by violence and be content with your wages. In other words, don't grumble, don't rebel, don't use your power and your position to hurt others. It's almost Shakespearean, isn't it, that phrase? You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath that is to come? We've just lost one of our best Shakespearean actors, Sir Anthony Sher, and you can almost hear those words on his lips. But they're words you will never forget. You brood of vipers, do you feel like a brood of vipers? Well, maybe there is some viperism in each of us, in each of our hearts. Why is John giving this difficult message? Why is he telling us that we must turn around our attitudes and do this? Because he says, it's not me you should be looking at. I am not the Messiah. I'm simply preparing the way for one who is greater than I. I'm not even worthy to bend down and do what a servant does and unlatch his sandals for him and then wash his feet. I cannot do that. I can do something. I can baptize you. I can use water. I can wash you clean. But it won't last. For it isn't that deep cleansing that you brood of vipers need. You need something more. You need the one who will come and cleanse you with fire, not just with water. You will need the Messiah to come. 
notice who is not on stage at the moment. This passage is all about John. Never is the name of Jesus mentioned. Jesus is waiting in the wings. And if you choose to go on and read beyond this passage, which I invite you to do, you'll find that almost immediately after this, Luke tells the story of Herod throwing John into prison. And then immediately he switches the focus to Jesus, coming out of the wilderness, having been baptized, praying, and being ready now to start his public ministry. We as Christians do not know what will happen in just under two weeks' time on Christmas Day. We don't know whether we will be gathering here or under what circumstances. We do know that we need to take care of everyone around us, and not just those who are here, but those who are in our community, but not of this particular community of Christians who gather for worship. We have a very special role to undertake and the only reason that we do it is not because we are a brood of vipers, but because we are forgiven by the God who loves us, who says, you need my love so much that I will send my only son into the world to be born as a humble child in your midst, and you may not recognize him as the king who is to come, but he is the Messiah, he will come this first time and will see how the people of earth treat him. But be warned, he will come a second time too. And you, if you are to be ready for this, must look into your own hearts. But never forget to party. Never forget to say Gaudete, rejoice, Rejoice in the Lord always. And as Paul says, and again, in case you didn't hear it the first time, I say, rejoice. <laughs>